Your higher self wants you to be at peace. Your ego wants to keep you in a state of turmoil in order to maintain its mastery and control over your life. You've probably listened to your ego most of your life. The result of listening to ego is that most of us allow ego to talk us into choosing dominance rather than tolerance as our style of interacting with life. Making the change from dominance to tolerance requires disciplining ego and listening to your sacred self. I'm speaking from personal experience in this matter, and it is one of the toughest assignments my higher self has presented me with. I have spent many years being dominated by my ego, and I have unwittingly made dominance and judgment rather than tolerance a cornerstone of my relating. My suggestions are all from my personal experience of transcending my ego-driven instincts. Making the transition from dominance to tolerance is especially difficult because the desire for ego satisfaction is so strong. To move toward the tolerance that your higher self encourages and away from your ego-driven need to control and judge, you will want to examine the qualities that sustain a tolerant approach to life. To become more tolerant and less controlled by your false self, start practicing being satisfied with what is. If someone you love acts meekly towards you, your ego wants that person to be more assertive. If that person is assertive, your ego then decides to dislike assertiveness. If you eat too much, you start thinking about how nice it would be to be thinner. If you go on a diet, and all of your thoughts then will be about food. If you stay at home for a long period, your ego starts telling you how nice it is to travel. Go on the road, and you start thinking about how nice it would be to stay home. You're in a relationship and begin to imagine it would be nicer to be uninvolved. You're not in a relationship, and you start wanting to be in one. Your children are running around the house, and you start thinking about escaping. You aren't at home, and your ego starts having you think about nothing but your children. If you identify with this kind of inner dialogue, rest assured that ego has temporarily separated you from your sacred self. In its ongoing program to convince you of your separateness, it needs to separate you from oneness with the center of your being. Then it can keep you in that state of trying to dominate and control others as a way of trying to achieve your inner balance and bliss. Trouble is, you cannot get there if you are separated from the awareness of your higher self. As you begin listening to your higher self in quiet and contemplative moments, you begin relaxing and taking the pressure off. You stop the false thinking that everyone in your life needs to be dominated or controlled by you, or that others must live up to your expectations for you to be happy. People are the way they are, and your need to dominate or change them in any way is the edict of your false self. Your ego is, as usual, trying to convince you of your separateness. It also doesn't want you to catch on to how it is controlling your life, so it convinces you that if you don't dominate others, they will get the best of you. Your higher self has absolutely no need to dominate anyone or anything. This is the ticket to freedom. Right now, though, in this very moment, your ego is working to convince you that the higher self and tolerance are ridiculous ideas. Ego will argue that tolerance means permitting criminal behavior and health and social problems. Its favorite example is that it would mean permitting the Hitlers of the world to commit atrocities while we tolerantly look on. Your higher self can see beyond this logic, so of course you can too, if you are willing. When Mother Teresa was asked if she would march against the war in Vietnam, she replied, no, but if you have a march for peace, I'll be there. When you become peaceful within, that is what you will have to give away. When you are dominated by your ego, you dominate others. If there is no inner harmony, there is no outer harmony. Ego needs the illusion of enemies in order to control you. When you are controlling others, it is because you have permitted ego to be in control. The paradox here is that you will affect the world in the ways that you wish when you cease trying to improve conditions with intolerance and judgment. It is only when you are not controlled by ego that you can choose to not control others. What you believed was power when you dominated others was actually the external activity of ego controlling you. Your impact on the world at large begins with the smaller world of yourself. You will foster freedom and peace when you are free of ego's control and know the peace of your higher self traveling the path of the sacred quest. One of the first steps along your path is learning tolerance by practicing seeing the world as it is rather than as you demand it to be. These, then, are some of the ways that the ego attempts to rule our lives. Our goal in knowing our sacred self is to have the higher identities triumph over our lower identities. Essentially, your higher self wants you to be at peace. It wants you to know truth. It no longer needs you to dominate others. It is a very peaceful, loving place to be. 
at this point I would like to have you stop looking at how you can get your own sacred self in order and begin to look at how the world can do this as well. When we have a world of people who are radiating outward the kinds of things I've been talking about throughout this tape, you'll begin to see a whole new world order, one that is not dominated by a world ego. And so my conclusion here will not be an odyssey into all the evils of our society. I do not intend to end this tape cataloging all the problems that we have created as a result of allowing our egos to be the dominant force in our world. This is not to say that I fail to recognize that we have plenty of problems that have grown out of our preoccupation with satisfying our egos. Nor am I blind to the fact that our individual egos have interacted in ways that have produced war, crime, addictions, poverty, social inequities, and government tyrannies. We have created a world ego that reflects on the global level the same lack of depth and richness that exists in our individual lives. Throughout this tape, I have presented reasons for taming the personal ego and suggestions for how to do that. The very same can be said for doing this on a global level. I hope it is as obvious to you as it is to me that the collective ego will benefit when we transcend our individual egos. You, as a single individual, have a sacred quest. That quest involves coming to your higher spiritual nature and inviting it to show you the way of the sacred self in your daily life. This means denying the demands of your ego if those demands contradict the guidance of your higher self. Our world is a collection of individuals urged on by the loving presence within all of us to achieve the sacred quest personally and collectively. The world will become a peaceful, fulfilled, cooperative, loving, truthful, tolerant, and pure environment as the individual parts that make up the collective consciousness restrain their egos. As is the microcosm, so is the macrocosm. The whole behaves precisely as does its individual parts. Many people I speak to tell me that they feel powerless to affect the global community. They believe that, given the scope of the world's problems, their efforts are so infinitesimal as to be insignificant. They simply are not seeing that it is precisely through a change in individual consciousness that the world will be transformed. All of the problems that we face as a group reflect those we have individually. The world is encountering a spiritual deficit that reflects our need to consciously get on the path of our sacred quest. The solution to individual and global problems is to overcome the spiritual deficit. When you make the shift in consciousness allowing yourself to be an agent of heightened awareness, you are contributing to the transformation of our world. You are not separate from the other souls on this planet. You share the identical energy that embodies the souls of Rwanda and Pakistan, for example. You are the lamp and God is the electricity. It flows through you as surely as it flows through all living things. When you make the decision to choose the guidance of your higher self over your false self, you have plugged into the divine inner energy. When you run your life based on the principles of the higher self, you are contributing to the transformation of the entire world. You must strengthen your will to choose the sacred path when your ego calls you a fool for believing there could ever be a world without war. If your ego can convince you, you will become part of the collective ego's falseness. Individuals who choose ego propaganda are individuals who will build more bombs and manufacture more weapons. Currently, there are some six billion people on the planet. About three million are at war or in skirmishes that cause them to kill and torture each other. But that means that there are five billion, nine hundred ninety-seven million who are not at war. This is a hopeful statistic, which our egos do not want us to consider. By contrast, the collective ego strives to keep the populace nervously on the edge with reminders to view the world in terms of us versus them. This ego viewpoint not only reinforces the insane escalation of ways to kill each other, but is also responsible for most of our social problems. The world ego is our false self, and this is the primary characteristic that we need to recognize. We want to believe that we are our physical bodies and that the territories we occupy are so important that we are willing to kill each other in order to maintain those boundary lines. We have become convinced that our true identities are located in tribal ancestries, traditions, histories, genealogies, and the color and shape of our bodies. We have lost sight of our authentic identities because of the labels that our egos have assigned to us. Our egos have coalesced into a worldwide false perception of ourselves based on an unwillingness to know our true spiritual nature. Although all of our spiritual leaders have reminded us of our divinity and implored and even commanded us to love one another, the world ego has won this battle and produced ancient enmities and uncountable horrors in the long history of humanity. 
The spiritual solution to the major problems that face the world is to bring into positions of power those who are not motivated and driven by their egos, but see the collective good as their primary objective. We need leaders who do not manifest primitive tendencies of consciousness such as hate, envy, greed, bloodthirstiness, and intolerance, but are grounded in love, tolerance, truth, and purity. As you travel the path of your sacred quest, you will help to dispel the absurdity of specialness that the ego so assiduously promotes. You will see an end to this kind of thinking in your life and on a worldwide scale as well. The higher part of ourselves that I have talked about on this tape reacts to a vision that is infinite. This is assuredly not the vision of the ego. The ego is just as cowardly on a collective scale as it is on an individual basis. The world ego is frightened of a mass appeal to overcome our spiritual deficit. When people face inward and embrace a more loving perspective, the power of the sacred self will create change not only in the community but in the entire world as well. The world ego will do all that it can to prevent this kind of inner approach. It will ridicule those who promote meditation, peaceful demonstrations, and the love of God as a way out of the morass of social evils. The collective ego convinces itself that money makes it special, and thus it will throw dollars at any problem and pride itself on the undertaking. Consume, 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 more is better. The more you accumulate, the fancier your toys, the bigger your shopping malls, the more petrol that you use in your automobiles, the more successful you are. It is a push away from peace toward a style of consumerism and capitalism that is defended as the way of civilization. Yet your higher self knows there is no peace in the more is better. It is just as true on the collective level as it is on the individual plane. The higher self urges you to simplify and to avoid contributing to anything that hurts others or increases the separation from your spiritual source. As you listen more closely to your sacred self and transcend your ego, so too will the world ego be shifted away from power, control, and money, back to the basic virtues of higher awareness, back to peace, beauty, love, purity, tolerance, patience, and compassion. This does not mean that the benefits of technology cannot be enjoyed. It means that the ego will not...